Hey fellas, I'm done with the B25, but uh, before we get to that, I thought I'd throw together a video on how I made my base for this one. Now, I'm not a big uh, expert in making bases or dioramas. <clears throat> I do like to play with it. I've made a few. It's one of the more enjoyable things in the hobby for me. But uh, anyway, uh, if you want to skip to the finished model, then I will put a timestamp right here somewhere, and you can jump right to that. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the video. All right, while my decal, the clear coat over my decals is drying, I'm going to start working on the base. Now, because I'm going to ship this, I can't do anything real fragile with the base. So what I'm planning on doing is just building a, uh, or just making a, just basically a dirt field. But to kind of break it up, I've taken a piece of styrofoam and I've kind of melted it and just going to make a little hill and I'm probably going to put a little bit of static grass over here. And I think I'll be able to ship that without damaging that portion. But just to give it a little extra. And the plane actually covers a lot of the base up anyway. So it's just basically going to be an accent to it. And I'll probably put out some ammo cans. Uh, I've, I've made a barrel. I'll probably put, out, put that out there. And I may even put like a little ladder that uh, the, the new owner can put up like they were working on it. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for. And how I normally do this is, and you can see I'm out here on the big workbench, the pool table. I've got a couple different sizes of sand. I've got this coarse stuff. I've got some like pebbly stuff. Um... This is a little less coarse. And then I've also mixed up some baking soda and uh, a little bit of sand. <clears throat> and I like to put this on first. I think it it's, uh, kind of gives you a finer surface to work with. And how I apply this is I'll take some matte Mod Podge. Whoa, geez. A little too much there, kiddo. some of that out and the reason I'm doing this on uh, this big area because I don't want to get this crap all over my workbench and it's a lot easier to clean up this area than uh, getting this stuff all over my workbench and I'll take a little bit of water and just kind of thin this Mod Podge out now I've already put a coat of Mod Podge on here to kind of uh, seal it on the wood because if you put uh, something really wet on wood what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to really cause it to warp and bend and do all kinds of crazy stuff now I've got a big brush because I want to kind of do this quickly before the Mod Podge dries so basically I'm just going to slather this all over And I've got my, the bottom portion all taped off. And uh, because I've got that stained and I don't want any of this stuff to get there, get uh, along the, the edges of the wood, I'm gonna try to keep it somewhat neat. And again, you gotta work fast. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and basically try to get an even coat. And I am absolutely no expert in diorama making. I have experimented a little bit and I found that this works for me. And this is just going to give me the base groundwork. And I can come back.
shake it off. And you can see why I'm doing it out here, because this would totally make a mess, at least with my method. All right. I think that's got that covered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back and I'll really thin this out some more and I'm just gonna spray it over top to set this in. And then I'll start adding some more, gradually build up and add uh, different sizes of sand, maybe some out here, maybe some in clumps. I'll probably put some of those pebbles along here, maybe up here, and just kind of play with it till I get till I get uh, something that I'm I, I, that I'm happy with, and then my plan is is to prime it in black, and that'll give me a good idea of what it's going to look like um, if if I need to cover any more with with uh, any more of this stuff, and then I can. Uh, start painting it all right so next day this has had plenty of time to harden what I did is I mixed I mixed some more water with the glue and I kind of uh, drizzled it out all over the the mixture that I had to kind of lock it in so it's nice and hard so I got a nice grainy surface to work with now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting some bigger grains of sand and some rocks so basically what I've done is I've kind kind of just taking some non-watered down Mod Podge and I just kind of put it down here and I like to use different color of sand just so I can see see where I'm putting it that and that's what the store had And I'll probably put some just kind of just randomly. Ah, why'd I dip that in there? I'm so dumb. It's almost like sprinkles on your ice cream. And kind of make it look like maybe there's... Now my wheels are going to set like here and here and here. If I remember correctly. So I definitely don't want to put like big rocks and stuff there. But this stuff will give it a little more randomness. Mm. Keep doing that. Why do I keep doing that? I'm not awake yet. Now I'll take my watered down glue and I'm just gonna go over it like so. Just kind of lock it in. Now I know you can spray it and I did actually have a sp spray thing on here but uh, it got clogged up because I don't think it was it was meant for this type of deal. Oh, we're 
towards my water. So I'm gonna pour some more water in here. I should have added some soap to break up the tension. But I didn't. Now that's all there is to it. And next what I'll do is I'll strategically place some of these bigger rocks right along here. And I'm going to put static grass up on this hill sparsely. And again, I got to keep in mind that I got to ship this. So I want to make sure everything's locked down. And uh, I could probably be more extravagant if it wasn't going to be put in a box and, and uh, having to be shipped. But that's not where we're at. So... I'm, I'll uh, glue some rocks down along here, maybe spread them out, put a few in little patches, and then I will uh, prime it and then uh, start painting on it. Now, I did make some... I scratch built a little work ladder out of styrene strips and then added some extra photo etch like I've seen in some of the pictures and tried to... Get it as close as possible to the pictures. I also made a little barrel out of a tube. And then to get the ribs, I just took strips of tape, put them around, and then I, uh, I uh, overcoated it with Mr. Servicer 500 and then put a little photo etch top. So I think that'll work as a barrel. And then I took some ammo cans that I didn't use from the kit and we'll put those down there like they're getting ready to load up so that's where we're at all right I've got it all the rocks on and I ended up priming it I primed in gray Steinol res and I didn't want to use anything hot because I do have this foam back here and I don't know how that will react with with some of my lacquers. So, uh, Steinol Res was it. Plus, uh, I don't typically use it on my models, so it's good for dioramas. Uh, primed it in gray. I hit some highlights in white and uh, hit some low lights with the black just to just to give it a little pre-shading. And next, I'm gonna spray it with uh, deck tan and mix in some dark earth XF52. And I'll probably use a dark earth for this little hill mound that I've got over here. I've also primed the ladder and painted it like a brownish gray. I forgot what color it was. And then I'll uh, try to use some oil paints to, to uh, add somewhat of a wood grain and kind of dirty that up to make it look like old wood. And um, got my ammo boxes primed and my barrel over there. Got it all taken care of. So I'll start painting on those. So right now I'm going to get to this and start spraying the deck tan. All right. Well, I've got my base coats on. As you can see, there's a lot of different textures. There's a lot of different variations in the color. And one thing I like to do, I haven't clear coated this or anything. There's no real need to do that. And in fact, I think it works out better if you don't. But I've got an oil wash with like sepia. And so this is just sepia oil paint mixed with uh, enamel thinner. And then I'll just go around and just kind of play with it. 
and uh, darken up some areas. And it also gives some contrast to the rocks. And then I've got a couple other different colors that I may use just depending. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'm gonna dry brush some highlights. Like um, I'll probably take some of my base, uh, where are we at here? Some of my base deck tan. And then I'll come in here and I'm just gonna highlight some of these rocks some of the bigger ones. And this area up here is gonna be covered in static grass. And I've made a mixture of that. Let's see if I can get it. And I'm just gonna dry brush some highlights on these rocks. And that's going to make them pop out a little bit. And again, this is one of those things you can just play with. And just play with it till you, till you get something that you're happy with. And I may even come in with some white and hit some white highlights as well. Just to kind of make them pop out of there a little bit more. And to be honest with you, you're not, uh, a lot of this is going to be covered by the plane. So I think once it's done and the plane's on it, it's going to kind of bring it all together. So this is kind of like what I like to do is just hit a little bit of highlights and just play with it. Happy little, happy little dirt. Just kind of blend it all in. And then that gives you kind of a, a uh, random, random color variations. And I just think it uh, brings a little bit more realism to it. So that's what I'm working on. And uh, I will probably see you when it's done and all together. I did get my ladder painted. And what I do is I paint it like a brownish gray. And then I took some oil paint and kind of streaked it on there. And then I went and painted the rusty, rusty uh, metal fixtures on it. So that'll go right about here next to the plane and then I went ahead and painted up the oil drum and I took some of the same color that I sprayed for the ground and I kind of misted the bottom so it'll kind of blend in and fit with the with the terrain and then I did the same thing with the with the ammo cans that are gonna sit underneath the plane so, all right, I will see you in a bit. All right, fellas, here is the finished B25 2.0. And the 2.0 means that I built it before. So this is... This is the second time that I built it. And I didn't have any other, I didn't have any issues that I haven't already spoke about. It went together really well. Um, I really enjoy these B-25 kits. And, and I think the B-25 is probably one of my favorite World War II bombers. I, uh, I worked on the base a little bit more off camera. And I just kind of played with different browns, oil paint washes. And just kind of modeled it and tried to get it to where I was I was eventually happy with it and I think it turned out pretty good and I think once you, once I put the plane on there the base you know it, it you lose some of it but it's it's kind of um, the base I think adds a nice little accent to the model let's turn it around here so you can see it now I don't have any of the guns glued in some of them may be kind of cockeyed just because the owner's gonna have to glue them in 
and uh, so I didn't, you know, I don't want to, since I have to ship this, I don't want to glue any fragile parts on that I don't have to. The propellers still come off. This little uh, antenna or pitot tube down here, it's just dry fit in there. Like I said, all the guns, all the, all the gun barrels, they're just, uh, they just fit in there and the owner can glue them in. The only ones I think, the only guns I think would really need to be glued in are the ones in the front because you kind of have to adjust them. Just, just the way I built it, you're going to have to adjust them and then glue them in to get them straight. Uh, the, the doors on the bottom, I didn't glue those in just because I'm, since I'm shipping it, I want to make sure that I really batten this thing down tight so it doesn't rattle around. So I'm not uh, gluing in any of the open doors on the bottom. I just kind of got those blue tacked in. Uh, one thing that I did do this morning, once I got it finished and I set the plane on there, I ended up taking a little bit of Mod Podge and baking soda mixture and kind of making little areas where I was going to put the barrel. And I kind of smushed the barrel down in there just to give it a better feel like it's not sitting on top of the base, that it's actually a part of the base. And I also did that with uh, the three tires as well. I'm going to try to lift this up without um, breaking anything, but uh, so you can see the bottom. Ah, whoop, hit. My blue tack fell off. But uh, here's the bottom. And, you know, I just kind of grind it up and did a little bit of streaking. Not much because, uh, I mean, in, in all honesty, I don't think you're going to be picking this thing up too much because stuff's going to fall off. But uh, here's how my little bombs work out and I really like how that worked I attached them with some sprue goo because there's such little attachment points on each one of these bombs I put a little bit of sprue goo on both the bomb and the little attachment points so they're nice and solid and with the magnets they just fit in there just like so make sure I don't break anything I did make extra barrels for the guy in case one of them gets lost. So I've got like three or four extra barrels. But this has like 15, 15 different uh, gun barrels on it. So let's scrape some of that. And this is from setting the tires in the stuff this morning. As you can see, I've got little spots where the plane kind of, the, 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 uh, the wheels kind of sit down in there. I am going to try to get this thing back on without breaking it. So, there it is. And, uh, you know, compared to my last one, the owner asked me which one I liked uh, better. And the last, the, the, the first B25 132nd <clears throat> scale that I built a year ago, that was my first big World War II plane that I built. And I kind of overdid it a little bit. I really liked how it turned out. It was really, it was really dramatic. And uh, I liked how that one turned out. But I kind of tried to make this one a little more realistic. I don't know if I accomplished it. But uh, I kind of took uh, different things from different reference pictures and kind of implemented them. And it was kind of neat because this was a, a made-up plane, so I didn't have to stick with any one thing I had a had a little bit of freedom so I will quit yapping and uh, I will uh, show you flash up some pics and I uh, should be starting another build maybe next week <laughs>